Today we're in Juneau Beach, Florida, where we'll visit the Loggerhead Marine Life Center, where they rescue loggerhead turtles. The leatherback turtle is the largest of the three pictured here, the loggerhead being the middle one, slightly to the right, just an outline in orange. And then the smaller Kemp's Ridley turtle in green, the lower left. The loggerhead uh, stands about chest high to me here at this picture. You can see both stripes oh, that yeah. they have on there are kind of like braces that they're trying to, they actually an orthod orthodontist attached it and what they, they tighten it every 48 hours because they want that tissue to grow together. So it's kind of like an experimental thing to see how well it works and they, they think it's working well. Everything you ever wanted to know about turtles. Part of today was spent at Boca Raton Museum of Art, where my guidebook said I could find some work uh, by some of the old masters, Degas, uh, Picasso. Unfortunately, they were just sketches, uh, some of which are, well, not a dime a dozen, certainly, but there's a lot of them around. No picture taking was allowed anyway, so what I did see can't be shared. Well, we didn't do so good at the uh, art museum, so let's have, see how we do at the Fort Lauderdale Antique Car Museum, featuring the Packard motor car. I learned how to drive in a 1951 Packard convertible. Let's see if they got one here. A 1925 Packard truck outfitted as a paddy wagon. It's a 1915 Packard truck. Uh, Packard concentrated on making trucks from 05 to 23 when they uh, dropped making trucks to concentrate on their motor cars, especially the 12 cylinder. 1929. Do you remember the Packard advertising slogan? Ask the man who owns one. I always thought that was a perfect slogan. A 1925 seven passenger touring. 1923 doctor's special, designed especially for doctors, rural doctors. Had a special compartments for his medicines in his bag. The Packard sports car of its day, a 1922 Phaeton, Phantom, if I pronounced that correctly. A 1918 model with 36,000 miles on the odometer. 1916 limousine. The passenger compartment is enclosed while the driver sits out in the weather. He does have a roof over his head, however. Count the spark plugs. That's a V12. Very, very smooth operating vehicle. Did you ever wonder where all those missing cigar lighters went from the cars? Now you know. They're in the Fort Lauderdale Antique Car Museum. 1938 flower car could be used for a first call to pick up bodies or to transport flowers, chairs, that sort of thing to the funeral. This is the rear of the vehicle where you slide in the uh, first call casket. 1928 tow truck, kind of hard to see at the back there. A 1948 Woody. 1930 fire truck, the 1958 Packard Hawk, the end of the line for Packard, they ceased production. We're in Miami Beach at the Holocaust Memorial. The human figures at the bottom of the statue are 
attempting to escape the Holocaust. And around the edge they've listed many of the uh, names of people who were lost in the Holocaust. We're at the base of the statue hidden from view by the street. setting sun well behind it. And we're now headed into the Everglades National Park. A World Heritage Site. Pinelands Trail in the Everglades. It's the most varied habitat in the park. Sawgrass, a pine island, cactus, the jungle tangle at the end of a hammock. As we walk along the trail, it changes from what we normally see in the uh, Everglades to a very thick, tangled area. This is a small poison wood tree. Uh, touching it will leave an oil on your skin that will affect you just the way poison ivy does. The leaves are recognizable by being in a series of five and having a yellow outline around the outer edge of the leaf. Snakes, watch out for the coral snake, the cottonmouth, the diamond, eastern diamondback rattler, and the dusky pygmy rattlesnake. Oh boy. Now what made the difference between this and this is just a slight rise in the elevation, allowing a different type of vegetation to survive. These conifers, or pine trees, evergreens, actually shed their pine needles in the dry season. They don't lose any water that way. Hey, hey, Oki Trail. To a chance to view the Everglades wilderness. We are on the edge of Shark River Slow. It's a river, and it's also a prairie. The river is eight miles wide here. If you look carefully down to the left of the small little tree that appears to be dead, you'll see that that's wet. Water flowing through here year-round. But as you can see, very shallow, literally a few inches. We're going to Mahogany Hummock, and although this is not it that's pictured, it's a real good example of the islands that exist in this uh, river, this shallow river, and the plant life that can grow with a soil that's just a slight bit drier. Hidden inside this hummock is mahogany trees who ex escaped the uh, logger's attention by being hidden. This is a tree that was uh, blown over by a hurricane. Now take a picture of it so you can see how shallow the root system is. The tree itself is off to the right in the middle of the picture. You can only see a couple of feet of the tree itself. Here you can see more of the tree as it fell over into the brush. And this is an old growth mahogany tree. We're at the visitor's center campground marina called Flamingo. It's on the southern tip of Florida, the mainland part of Florida anyway. Looks like this young man got himself into a little trouble.